Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Kerbal Space Program part development. In my previous video I introduced this wraparound service module tank which allows for something to go in the middle there but the textures were quite messed up and uh, I think it was Liquid Hype who gave me the suggestion to use edge split in order to clean that up and now it looks like this. Not great, the textures are still sort of work in progress. Now they look awful flat though um, but in any case uh, that's I think an improvement. Uh, downside though is that the nozzles, which did have an opening, I mean I, I made a little mesh and they had a little opening down there, uh, ended up uh, being sealed off after doing edge split. So I'll probably have to do edge split without doing it on the nozzle ends. I'm not entirely sure why they're like that. I'm not entirely clear exactly how edge split works sometimes. So anyway, uh, but that is not the part that we're interested in today. Uh, let me get a new thing here and the part we're interested in today is the heat shield with two engine slots. Uh, I will probably make a heat shield with four engine slots. Now it's not supposed to be transparent down here. Um, I, the, it seems like every part I have I have a particular problem with. Uh, these streaky things is just because of the way I did the texture. But it does have fuel tanks you can see. Uh, maybe if I can put it on top, you can see them better. Uh, little fuel tanks. Also, it's transparent on the inside. I don't know. Textures. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to work on that. Here, here you can see the cylinders are fully done, but then inside they're not. It's weird. Uh, but let, let's try out the functionality of this, is the thing. They are in stock. They are sized to have uh, spark engines and uh, actually and we can symmetrize the spark engines and I put them as high up as possible just in case you want to use other engines so we'll pull them down so that they just go like that could put them higher up it's up to you but the question is does this work like a proper heat shield now it does have some interesting features you can see uh, Intel is 1.46 tons compared to the regular 2.5 meter 1.3 tons, but it has much less ablator, only 400 compared to 800. And at the same time, it has a little bit of liquid fuel, oxidizer, and monopropellant. So that's what takes up the extra mass. And if we take a look at the delta V stats, this is what we see. We see that it's 380 if it has the monopropellant. If you dump the monopropellant, it has a little bit more than that, but not a whole lot more. It cannot uh, facilitate a landing with the spark engines on the surface of Kerbin, but you could probably land on on Minmus like that. Uh, it might be a little bit tough to get back into orbit again, though. So maybe I'll review the quantities of liquid fuel and oxidizer in there, so that we can at least uh, have this land on. Minmus and take off again. I'll think about it. Not too sure. But anyway, and hopefully the heat shield is good enough in order to protect it from a return from Minmus. That'd be another thing. Now, of course, you can stage uh, heat shield jettison per normal, and that should work. Uh, now, I did not put the little um, node that the other heat shields have so that you can put a decoupler inside. So right now the bottom node is... Uh, let's get a big one. Bottom node is like this. So for now, I either need to tweak it up or use a fairing of some sort, and then it'll be all right. The reason for that is because of the collider. And I was afraid that if I made this, uh, made the bottom node too far in, that it would interfere with the collider and I wanted the collider to be the right shape. So the collider is the shape of that and we can test that here. Uh, so RCS thruster, you can see where the collider is on here and it is rounded. And so I just wanted to make sure that the aerodynamics were fine for firm aerospace. Of course I intend to use this in realism overhaul at a greater size, it'll be a four meter heat shield there. And then, of course I'll have a tweak skill and everything like that. So yeah, that'll be a totally different situation. 
and I'll probably do another video testing it in Realism Overhaul once I get that configuration done because it's different with real heat and everything else. But yeah, so this is the idea. Let me show it to you in Blender so that if you want to make suggestions for why I'm getting the weird um, transparencies where there isn't supposed to be some, I can at least show you what the situation is. So here, monitor capture Blender. But this is what it looks like in Blender. And you can see uh, the, the wall is supposed to go all the way up. You can sort of see the little bits of the piping from from the, sur uh, the surface module section. Now the reason I have a surface module section, oops sorry I flipped it around, that's got to be disorienting. The reason I have the surface module engine is to make sure that there is space for the engines uh, legitimately so that they're backed by some sort of protected um, material. Otherwise, um, if I just left holes, I'll probably make a version with just the gaps. But if you have just the gaps, there's a possibility that the heat goes through and affects whatever part is behind it. In this way, we sort of prevent that. And so I just made the tank like that. At this point, I think I should make a vehicle out of this, send it over to a minimus-ish height, and test that the heat shield works properly, and that the engines, the spark engines that we put in, don't blow up. Okay, well I've decided to go with my replica stock Saturn 1B, because it will probably be cooler this way. Uh, so SAS on, throttle up. All we're going to do is go to a simulated high orbit, you know, a minimus uh, level orbit, and then uh, have it come back down. That's about it. Maybe I don't want to really fly by Minmus though, because that might interfere with our orbit. I just want to get to Minmus level. So, anyway, uh, SAS on, throttle this up, and ignition, and launch. In order to get the Saturn 1B right, of course, I underfueled these. Otherwise, uh, either it wouldn't look right or it wouldn't be able to lift off. Okay, I've already turned quite a lot. Okay, don't flip, don't flip, don't flip. Okay, we're good. Uh, launch escape uh, system jettison. We'll wait a little bit. We'll wait a little bit. Okay, let's go. Off it goes. Yeah, obviously I should have launched a bit steeper. We are rather low in the atmosphere, and we are facing quite a lot of drag. Yeah, the inefficiency of the Saturn 1B was in all the structural mass we're carrying that isn't actually carrying fuel. And so, yeah, not the optimal rocket in this situation, but has just about the right amount of fuel to do this particular job. Let me turn on RCS and use some of that up. Separation. Okay, separated with a little bit of a jolt, but okay. And let me make sure that's not the heat shield. No, that's that. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, that is a minimus level orbit there. Actually, could potentially interact with Minmus at the right time, but we're not at the right time. Okay, so we're gonna go out there. I did use just a stock heat shield texture because uh, I know there are other heat shield textures from other mods, but I didn't want to use those. I'll probably have to come up with my own heat shield texture somehow. Of course, I don't want to use somebody else's, and but the stock one is fair game. I don't think I have it so that uh, the heat shield like darkens as it's going down or something like that, as it loses it later. I'll have to figure out how that's done. Okay, well let's make sure that we have a periapsis in the atmosphere of Kerbin. 15 kilometers, let's say 20. Okay, that should be good enough. And we still have a little bit to spare. Okay, no service module to dump this time. Normally before hitting the atmosphere we would... No, that's the wrong way around. We would jettison the service module, no need. 
That is not something we have to do. Okay, we have encountered the atmosphere. Let's look at that up later. This part's looking red immediately. Oh, oh, oh. Is this a problem for the spark engines? Come on, Sparks, you can you can do it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, there's a part in here. Well, the capsule is a little bit. Oh, that one's pretty serious. I could ignite them in order to slow down more, and maybe that would save them, but... I want this to be... A legitimate test? I don't... The capsule seems to be overheating, though, so that's not good. A blader is being used up. Then again, a little bit of the capsule sort of poking out around the heat shield. Maybe at the end of the day, the proper test will be the one in realism overall. So my motivation for doing this part, making this part, is because a lot of the Mars mission designs seem to use something like this with engines poking out of the heat shield. I mean, like most of them, in fact. So there's a, the, there also needs to be a variant where it's sort of a longish heat shield, sort of like a boat hull heat shield with four engines. And I thought about making a four engine variant, but that one probably won't have the service module tank. It'll just be four gaps, and we'll see how that works out, a four gap version. Uh, really, I, I, there are probably specific situations where you need more than 400 of later, but clearly not in this situation. I didn't carry anything to replenish electric charge. I didn't put solar panels, but I didn't think we'd need it for this. So a little bit peculiar as far as the shielding is concerned, in that the capsule seemed to be getting overheated. Or at least I think that that was the capsule. Pretty sure it had to be in the capsule, there was nothing else there. So, wondering about that. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll link the heat shield as it is currently, as well as the revised wraparound service module in the in the video description below and you can have fun with it as you like uh, but it's all still under development <laughs> okay so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time